you're watching We Got you Media, red carpet of Hollywood at the movie premiere, River Runs Red, and I'm here with the producer, director, writer, Wes Miller. Yes, thank you for having me so much. Thank you for having us, and congratulations on this amazing movie premiere. We've seen a trailer, and it's, you know, it's breathtaking, honestly. How did you come up with the story? Um, thank you so much. Um, it's a story that, you know, we kind of saw um, happening in the headlines today, um, and being a former attorney, you know, I've uh, been inside the system, and I just thought it would be interesting to look at this issue um, from the perspective of a person inside the system, and if the system fails that person, what what options would he have left? And, um, and then we just began crafting the story and just wanted something that would be, mm -hmm. both be entertaining and a conversation piece. Yeah, I mean, those stories are building up those days, uh, you know, it's, it's happening. It's really happening out there. And um, what is amazing, I mean, how did you pick the characters? Like, we see George Lopez in the movie and Tidex mm -hmm. and all these phenomenal characters. How did you come up with the vision to match them up so perfectly? Um, you know, sometimes it's just a little bit of divine intervention, um, but George Lopez has been amazing, um, and we were looking for somebody for, with the characters that both could have some empathy and also some dramatic gravitas, and of course we know Tay has been, you know, um, he's a legend and has shown his range, and we felt like he could communicate um, the, the lead character's struggle in a very visual way that also connects to, you know, America, um, and then George Lopez, you know, has a well of of experience to pull from and I thought with George um, it would be interesting um, for him to be able to show his dramatic side and the skills that he has dramatically and I really hope like you know people see it and so they can get that right. experience. It's a shift 180 degrees from his comedy you know mm -hmm. he he has a really good skills to pull the emotions out of people on the comedy side. Yes. He always makes everybody happy now here you mm -hmm. see the totally opposite side which is amazing. Yes. Uh, tell me a little about about the action because there's a lot of action there's a lot of thrilled moments yes um, so you know for me I wanted again to entertain um, and I believe like action does give allow us to have a very visual and visceral experience with movies um, but at the same time we wanted the action to be earned and character driven so by the time we get to the you know, the action um, we want to make sure that you, you care about what happens to everybody involved in the action sequences and we had a great uh, stunt coordinator Greg Reminter and a great stunt team um, and it was just really awesome, like putting that together with you know me and my editor Rowan. Yeah. First of all, congratulations on your film premiere. Thank uh, you. We are anticipating. It's a very interesting story. Congratulations on your nominations on uh, film festivals for the best screenplay and for the best film oh, uh, for you. the um, uh, player never fails. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I've done some research and um, uh, you're working on um, Hell on the Border and our Harlem yes. and uh, you've done uh, a witch story mm -hmm. um, to me it's all a little bit like dramatic right and when I was watching the trailer of your film um, you had those um, autumn mid-autumn you know nature and those colors it's a little bit cold mm -hmm. makes you feel lonely yeah and willing to get some protection and warmth mm -hmm. what is inspiring you um, I mean, that's a good question. I think, like, for me, honestly, it's with, first with the material, and for some reason I am drawn to more dramatic, uh, contrasty uh, type of material. Um, and it's funny that you recognize that. But, yeah, you know, I just, you know, I think, you know, different filmmakers um, have a certain aesthetic that they gravitate towards. And for some reason, you know, the that, that darker, the... Um, the more of a dramatic aesthetic kind of is kind of where we're at. And I just think it's, it's visually interesting and you know with most films it's about a lot of conflict um, and I just think that contrast and that that mood really helps a lot of times just tell stories where you have conflicted characters. It does definitely. All the colors which mm -hmm. you, 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 you used, I mean I'm anticipating to watch the film. Awesome. Because it's, it's, it makes me think a lot and the story of two fathers having the same issue. How did you come up with this idea, the feeling? What inspired you? Well, what inspired me was just like what's happening today. Um, and then just being an artist, you want to comment on what's happening and maybe contribute something to that discussion. And, you know, I felt like, you know, you have a father who's inside the system and a father outside the system and different races, different colors. But at the end of the day, you have the system that is designed to keep us um, civilized and advanced from where we were in the wild, wild west. Well, what happens when that system fails all fathers, no matter if you're in the system or outside the system? 
them. Um, and at the end of the day, I think as a society, we would just regress back to the wild, wild west. So I see this often as like a modern western in the sense of the sheriff leaves the town. The sheriff in this movie is the system. Um, and then, so what happens? And then, you know, with every choice is a consequence. How did you come up with uh, the characters? How did you develop characters in your imagination, which um, both main leads are, are playing? Yeah, I mean, I think the process is you kind of let the characters develop themselves. And to me, character is really um, what does a person do when someone's not looking. And in the writing process, um, you present them with obstacles and you let them work the obstacles out. And, um, and, and that kind of really dictates who they are. And you always want your characters to have, be distinct and have their own point of view. So, for instance, Tay's character um, has the similar obstacles as George's characters. Um, and then, generally, because they have different educational backgrounds, different life experiences, they would take on these conflicts in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, for this film, even though they take it on different ways, um, they end up on the same path together. So, it's just really just kind of thinking it through and wanting to give the, uh, the audience characters that they can relate with, empathize with, and actually care about what happens. How did you feel working with these two lead actors of different uh, backgrounds, and they, they, they have different characters, mm -hmm. like one is a mechanic, another one is a judge. How did you work with them to make them feel the, the role to enter the character? Was it easy, and maybe who was the most difficult? Yeah, I wouldn't say it was easy, but Tay and George both um, are amazing actors, so I was really blessed in that regard to be able to work with them. Um, and at the end of the day, it was really us working together to really identify who these characters are, how they would respond, and like really pushing for the truth of the matter and, and, and really wanting to get the best out of them to convey to the audience what their emotional state is. Um, so again, by the time the end of the movie comes, we want you to actually care what happens to them and the, and the officers as well. You know, um, one thing that was important to me was not to make this a one-sided affair. We really wanted to make sure that officers were represented and also like the regular you know people are represented so it's not really an indictment against police officers um, we want you to care what happens to the police officers as well and um, you know I look at it as a tragic story um, and uh, you know that that's kind of you know what we did we just wanted to tap into those actors is um, reservoir to bring their experiences and whatever helps them relate to the character which visually we can present to the audience many artists when they they draw, they, they draw the picture, they have a message. Mm -hmm. And the message sometimes is really tiny and it's hidden. It's not like a big picture which everybody can see. Right. So what is your, this tiny message? And why did you come up with the, uh, with the name uh, River Runs Red? Well, I, I can't, I won't answer the question about the message because um, let's let everybody take their own from it. But I think River Runs Red is, I think the river of life runs red with blood generally and we all bleed the same um, and so no matter what side of the fence you're on what race you are what country you're from you know our, the river of life will always be red and I think once we as a society understand that um, it just helps us advance a lot more so um, but yeah on the message part um, I was asked that question at a festival and I just I won't answer that one that's like well, I, yeah. I understand yeah. well, I appreciate that and the last question yes. for you as a successful writer filmmaker producer director your three tips of success for our young generations um, in filmmaking yes yeah so I would say persistence work on your craft um, and persistence yeah. Persistence, work on your craft and persistence. Yes, because it's, it's tough. You're watching Red Carpet of Hollywood Marina Kufa. We got you media here with RJ Med, Officer yes. Thomas, River Runs Red. Yes. Oh my God, yes. well, tell me all about it. It, it was great. I was I was very happy that I could uh, have a small I have a small little bit in this. I'm really happy about it. Um, we had a great group of people, but um, short lived. You have fun, did you enjoy it? I had a lot of fun, yeah. And Wes, Wes was a great director, and we had a great group, and oh, yeah. I was very happy that, um, that uh, to meet some good friends and to see some, some action. Yeah, some action. And well, definitely a different story this time, right? Yeah. It took a turn. I, it is. I, you know, I think it's something that, like, is is a very prevalent story and I think that this kind of puts things in people's perspective and minds out there and it, it's a good story. It's a story of like, uh, it's a story of tragedy and someone that is willing to do anything for his family and like we see this 
story over and over, and, and this is no different in that way. It's like, how far are you willing to go? What are you willing exactly. to do to get that? Yes. And it's, it's cool to see. Awesome. Well, tell me a little bit about uh, your character. You are the cop, so. I, I, I have a how small it? little, yeah, it was great. I mean, you know, it's, it's I, uh, I'm, I'm sadly kind of an <laughs> innocent bystander, but, um, but it, it was cool. I mean, you know, I, I came in for a brief, a brief stint in the movie and mostly just kind of a, a bridge piece. And, you know, these characters are fun to do because you don't really have a lot of meat to it, but what it is is you can help push the story along. And I, I enjoy working and I enjoy this type of, types of content, so. How was it to work in with George Lopez and Ty Dick? You know, I, they, they mostly just shot me, so I, I, um, I didn't get to work much with them, but they were really great, and, um, and you know, George has become a good friend of mine, and Ty was, was amazing to have conversation with, he's oh, smart, yeah. and you know, you know who's actually like a really OG is Luke, Luke, Luke Hemsworth, like, I, I had such a great, I was in Tennessee for like three days, and it worked out very well, and we hung out, and it was, it was a lot of fun. We, we really cared about, like, we, we really enjoyed what we did here. So, well, listen, yes. let's go and check out the movie. Yes. Fantastic screening. Thank you so much no for your worries. interview. I hope you enjoyed. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. You're welcome. Have a good day. Okay. First of all, congratulations. Thank you your, so much. Thank you. On your beautiful work. Thank you. Uh, please share with us your feelings. How did you feel playing this villain? Well, you know, it's a. Uh, I didn't. It was a character that was very interesting because it had a lot of different layers. You know, he suffered so much from his father's what he was going through with his father situation. Um, well, no, he, there was a lot of underlying race, uh, racist resentment within him. I feel, but I didn't want to be too much on the nose when it comes to you know seeing a young black kid driving a fancy car. You know, so I, 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 I try to keep it subtle as possible. Um, and, uh, you know, I think the character, I've not seen the film yet, but I heard it turned out pretty well. It was, it was good to play. It, it was, yeah. I, I've seen the trailer. All oh, right. And uh, I enjoyed your, your your role. Thanks. How did you get into the role? Did you use some kind of experience? What tricks did you... Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. You, well, don't, you don't look like a bad guy. I, I am a vet, yeah. Well, you look I, a nice guy. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, I, I normally do play a lot of villains, okay. but... I did a bit of research, there was a lot of uh, American cops who have had racist experience, so they kind of, uh, you know, I try to read about their lives and what motivated them and whatnot, but, you know, it's, uh, as an actor, you you know, one minute you're Abraham Lincoln, the next minute you're an Indian from, you know, the 1400s, so you've just got to adapt, but the cast were really good to work with, you know, but it was fun, it was very much fun. How did you feel uh, playing together with your uh, partner, another villain? Luke? Yeah. Well, I feel like Luke wasn't so much a villain, he had a heart and he suffered for it, you know, and you have, so you basically had an Australian and a Scottish guy playing two southern, you know, racist cops. Yeah. So I try to stay in, stay with my accent, my American accent, and he would always hit my trailer and tell me to stop talking American, so he killed my accent all the time. Your three tips of success for our viewers. Um, perseverance, never give up, and always pray. <laughs> Keep God on your side, always pray. Thank you so much, congratulations. God bless you. Thank you. So Thank you. I wrote that part with me in mind, so you know, I had a lot of respect for that, and then we were able to uh, to still pull it off and doing it. So he's very good, very good style, very creative, and uh, you know, you have a guy that's a leader that doesn't really say a lot, but you know that he, he's there 100% of yes. the time. You just feel connected to him. So do you think, um, do you think we can make an impact with the movie on society? Well, you know, it's it's a it's a subject that you know we, it was tough last year when we were doing it, and it's been a whole year of and continuing to lose people like that every day. So, you know, this is a uh, um, it's a deep subject. It's a deep subject, and it's only a movie. But my heart goes out to people that 
are affected by any of this uh, every day. And they relate to how did yeah, you yeah. feel? How did you feel playing this father who lost his son, this dramatic, this painful role? And how did you get into the role? Well, you know, I had a, a very good friend of mine that I grew up with when I was 20. His name was Kenny Ramirez, and he, and he got uh, he got uh, uh, shot by the police. So I pulled back on that, you know. And even though I'm in my mid 50s, it still feels very fresh that uh, uh, that he's gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank right, you guys. so thank much. You very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank Good luck on the premiere. Thank you, thank you. you are one of the producers, yes. and I watched the trailer, and the movie is absolutely amazing. What makes you. you choose to go by that story, especially directed by Wes Miller? Well, it was a story that Wes Miller came up with, and he sent the script to us, and we just loved it. He's um, inspired by uh, stories uh, that impact audiences and provoke them to think, and it was just a wonderful project to be a part of, to see it come through. So how was the story introduced? to you? Well, he, he was working on it and, he, you know, Wes is one of the partners in the group and he was like, I have this idea for a story and he has a lot of them, but that particular one he sent and everyone was like, wow. Yeah, this, this is a breathtaking is story and you guys have to yes. see it. Yes. River Runs Red. Yeah, River so runs how was red. your experience uh, during the whole project? How long it took you guys to produce it? Um, the project, it took probably like a year and a half to get off the ground. Yeah, um, it was It was pretty um, intense because you know you were trying to find an African-American actor to carry the yes. film and the juggling of that yeah. it isn't so many with a smaller budget so it was a lot of jumping through hoops and figuring out what puzzles go together to put the whole pieces together yeah. it, it was a lot it was a lot to produce um, this project but we're so glad to see it come to fruition and um, and at Heartland it did really well in the festival there last week and the you know reviews are coming in that it's pretty good so We'll see. Wow. And is this, have you done, what other projects have you done? Well, I have an action film that's coming out called The Tone from our same production company. It's coming out in February. I'm actually, um, I'm an actor in this film and I open it. Oh, really? And I star in our other film. Wow. And then in our next project we're doing, I'm one of the actors. So I'm an actor producer in the production company. She's amazing. I, where can we follow you? How can we find uh, Jacqueline you? Jacqueline Fleming, at Jack Fleming, and that's J-A-Q. Last name is Fleming. And so uh, I'm just excited. We have another big project coming out from the company called The Tone, releases in February. So that's our, yeah, and that's the one I star in. So that's our next project. I think that the story is very uh, timely with what's going on in uh, society right now. And I think a lot of people will be able to relate to it and understand the perspective of, of what our lead character does. Not that it makes it right, the lead characters, but I think they'll be able to relate to the story. Mm -hmm. And in and in some way have empathy for them as well, the lead characters. I mean, two wrongs don't make a right, but you feel sorry at the end. Uh, well, empathy is uh, is a strong feeling, and mm -hmm. the, the film itself is pretty difficult. It has that autumn colors. It's a little cold. It feels like you need some. You want to you wanna, you, know, you want to seek some protection and warmth. Yeah. But from your perspective, what is the message, the main message, and how people can solve? of these issues. Well, you know, um, racism and hatred and judgment, it never wins. The the answer, you know, uh, contempt prior to investigation is, is what caused this whole thing to happen in the film. And I think if we as a society have uh, an open mind and are not so judgmental of other cultures, then we wouldn't have these kind of incidences that are tragic. You know, young African American men being shot and killed by the police force is it's, it's atrocious and what happens when the system fails you what do you do and that's a question that anyone could relate to if someone harmed you no matter what nationality you are so the film poses a lot of questions and I hope uh, that it leaves the audience very thought-provoked towards the end now we've screened it and you can hear a pin drop when the film is over uh, what was your input as a as a as a creator? I was one of the 
producers on the project, so from script development all the way from the development to pre-production all the way to when we were on set to post-production. I'm still working on the film, so <laughs> it's How a lot. How did you feel working on the set? I mean, you you had to, to, to be in that story, in that, you know, in that it, it, it was hard because I felt it. I was on set and Jennifer, the, um, she plays Tay Diggs' wife in the film and the scene where she, she breaks down, it, it, you know, you can't help. Everyone is on the set and you're just like, your heart is heavy. Yes. It's so heavy. It's such a tragic story and um, I still get teared up thinking about it. When I read the script, I just bawled. I just cried and cried and I was like, I have to be a part of this. You know, I have to be on board and tell the story. What was the most difficult moment for you on the set? <laughs> um, I, th I think um, the scene where it was after the funeral and we had a gospel um, group from Kentucky that was singing and it was so heavy like the song they sang everyone on set was just crying we were all like behind the cameras and our tears were just falling so yeah <laughs> well I don't want to make you cry right now you have <laughs> yeah, a I feel like that I'm gonna cry <laughs> that's emotional uh, could you please share with us with our viewers your three tips of success okay uh, my name is Jacqueline Fleming I'm an actress and a producer and I think the success is just um, it's really being happy for other people's success and paying it forward in life um, giving and mentoring and things like that which has been given to me and I give away you keep you gotta give it away to keep it thank you so much thank you for your interview good luck thank on you. the premiere and thank you. in order to stop you crying can we hug? Yes. Actually, they're showing my 